Hey guys, today you can see that we are gonna be talking about Abraham Lincoln and diving in and learning about his depression. Um, and that will actually benefit us. It's kind of an odd thing, but it's a good thing that he walked through that depression. Um, we see in his life, um, they actually titled it melancholy. Um, that, that That's what he had, like all of his friends and all his family. Um, if you just do a little bit of research diving into it, it's amazing um, the stuff he walked through. And I'm gonna I'm gonna read a few articles, um, and I'll I'll attach the actual article below um, in the description. But I'm just gonna read a brief a brief few things, maybe take two three minutes, um, and then I'll I'll dive into why why it's good. Um, so. The writer writes, throughout its three major stages, which I call fear, engagement, and transcendence, Lincoln's melancholy upends such views. With Lincoln, we have a man whose depression spurred him painfully to examine the core of his soul, whose hard work to stay alive helped him develop crucial skills and capacities, even as his depression lingered hauntingly, and whose inimitable character took great strength from the piercing insights of depression. The creative responses to it and a spirit of humble determination forged over decades of deep suffering and earnest longing um, and then it talks about these spells he had such spells were just one thread in a curious fabric of behavior and thought that his friend called this melancholy he often wept in public and recited maudlin poetry he told jokes and stories at odd times he needed the laughs he said for his own survival as a young man he talked more than once of suicide and as he grew older he said that he saw the world as hard and grim full of misery made that way by fate and the forces of god no element of mr lincoln's character declared his colleague was so marked obvious and ingrained as his mysterious and profound melancholy his melancholy dripped from him as he walked his friend recalled um, and then he talks about what depression is like. It says, it tells what depression is like to feel not only miserable, but the most miserable. To feel a strange, muted sense of awful power. To believe plainly that either the misery must end or life will. And yet to fear that the misery will not end. The fact that Lincoln spoke thus not to a counselor nor a dear friend, but to his law partner, indicates how relentlessly he insisted on acknowledging his fears. Throughout his late 20s and early 30s, he drove deeper and deeper into them, hovering over what, according to Albert Camus, is the only serious question human beings have to deal with. He asked whether he could live, whether he could face life's misery. But finally, thankfully, he decided that he must. Um, it's recorded that, um, that he said this. He, he replied that he could kill himself and that he was not afraid to die. Yet he had an irrepressible desire to accomplish something while he lived. He wanted to connect his name with the great events of his generation and so impress himself upon them as to link his name with something that would redound to the interest of his fellow man. This was no mere wish, Lincoln said, but what he desired to do so. Um, and then in his middle years, Lincoln turned from the question of whether he could live to how he would live. Building bridges out from his tortured self, he engaged with a phys Physiolog physiological culture of his time, investigating who he was, how he might change, and what he must endure. Having seen what he wished to live for, Lincoln suffered at the prospect that he might never achieve it. Even so, he worked diligently to improve himself, developing self-understanding, discipline, and strategies for succeeding. Um, that's all I want to read. You guys can read the rest of the article. It is it's awesome. Um, and here's why. He had chronic depression, yet he led our nation through one of the most challenging times and changed the lives of millions of people. Um, in, in his opponent's eyes, in his eyes, in the country's eyes, his depression was almost a strength, um, which, is, which is crazy. Like I've never, until reading this article, I'm gonna be honest, I've never, thought of depression as a strength or something that's I wouldn't say good to have um, but that isn't maybe necessarily a weakness um, 
which is hard. Like even that is challenging to say, um, but we see it. We see it in this man because he was depressed and because he struggled with that, he was willing to lean in more than the average person. He wasn't just satisfied with just life or just, I'm just going to go to law school and just get this done and get this done and then get married and have kids and then I'm going to die. Like he wasn't satisfied with that. He needed more and was constantly disappointing himself to learn more, constantly fighting to live and making life more interesting and studying things and, and gaining knowledge and wisdom and tools and resources that eventually led him to becoming the president of the United States. And in that helped him lead through the craziest war and, and lead through these intense things that were going on um, in that time. And so, I don't know, like I even look at it in my own life and see depression, I saw it as a weakness. And that's why I wanted to take antidepressants. Um, and even, I'm gonna, re, I'm gonna correct myself, but it, if you read in the article, it actually says that he, Abraham Lincoln himself, was looking into other medication. He was taking, of course, back in the day, it was kind of sketchy medication, but he was taking like mercury pills um, and a few other things and cocaine, which was like legal back then. It was like in Coca-Cola, it was kind of crazy, but um, just to help him get out of those spells. Um, but it's like those very spells that led him to achieve greatness and led him to push further and harder and dig in deeper and question life more and try to really understand the purpose of things more. And, um, and, and I see that in my own life. And this last season though, I saw it as a weakness and I wanted to drown it out. I wanted to cover it up and say no more i just want to be i just want to be normal i just want to be okay with everything i just want the little things to make me happy and just life as it is to be dandy and fine um but that's what everyone else is doing and i don't know like i i can't i can't be like everyone else you think i think about it like this um it's it's a weird picture but like the song, The Little Drummer Boy. Um, Shall I play for you? pa rum pum 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 And it talks about this like little child who comes before Jesus um, as a baby. And he doesn't have much to give him, if anything. He doesn't have any gifts. He doesn't have money. He doesn't have gold. He doesn't have myrrh. Um, he doesn't have these things to give Jesus. Um, and you can look at that as a weakness. But what he did know is like, you know what? Okay, I'm good at this. Um, it's not something that necessarily you can have, or but it's, I'm just gonna play my drum. I'm gonna do the best I can with what I have. And in the song, Jesus Smiled, um, which I think is a powerful picture of what it looks like for people who struggle with depression like me, um, that we're not called to be perfect. I'm not called to be like everyone else. I'm just called to be faithful in my walk. I can't determine what other people do. I can't determine what other people say. I can't determine other people's actions, but I can, I can do mine and I can focus mine on giving what I can. Um, even if that's a day where I could barely get out of bed, but I did. And I did the best I could with what I had to love my wife. I believe that that makes Jesus smile the same way that someone who's perfectly healthy, um, able to get out of bed, run a mile, have a cup of coffee, make breakfast for the family, do everything. And before 8 a.m. is done more and it's easy for them. Like, but then they were faithful at work to pray for a coworker. And that was challenging for them. Like, I think I think we need to give ourselves a little more slack and say, okay, you know what? This is what I have. How can I be faithful with this? Um, and I think that pleases, pleases God. Um, and not saying that taking antidepressants doesn't please God at all. Um, but I think there's a time and a place for them. And I think there's a time and a place for leaning in and engaging. And right now I just, I'm in a season where this sucks. This is hard.
even the last few days I've, while making these videos, ah, I just go to bed and I'm like, oh my gosh, why am I making these videos? It would be a lot easier if I didn't, it would be a lot easier. Um, I'm being hundred percent honest here. If it would be a lot easier if I just went on medication. Um, and that's what I'm thinking, but then there's this little thing in me and believe me, it's little when I say it, but there's this little bit of faith in me that says, but what could you miss? What decisions will you make when you're depressed that, that maybe God wants to bless a ton because he's so thankful and so proud of you for, for wrestling through this and hoping. Um, and so it's the what if and um, that keeps me going on and then reading an article like this and seeing, whoa, because this dude fought through it. And it talks about how he wrestled with suicide, how he didn't even carry a pocket knife on him because he was afraid of killing himself. Like because he wrestled through it and fought through it and didn't do something to become like everyone else, he was able to be different because we needed different in that time. And so, I don't know, just some thoughts, a little bit of history. Um, again, read the article if, if you want some more understanding. But other than that, that's it for the day. Um, thanks for tuning in and hope to catch you later.